Hey guys, warm welcome on Super Designs YouTube channel. Here is Leonid and today I will show you how to pick best colors for your data. When it comes to data visualization, color is especially important. The color scheme sets the mood and each color serves to represent a unique piece of information. The colors you use represent more than just one idea. The color scheme you choose has the power to display the type of data you are showing, its relationship, the difference between uh, categories and more. You have probably noticed before that some colors look great together and others just don't. When you are figuring out how to design a chart or a dashboard, it is important to remember that how we perceive uh, colors depends on the context in which we see it. For instance, if you were creating a simple bar chart, would you want a dark background with dark bars? Probably not. You'd most likely want to create a contrast between your bars and the background itself, since you want your viewers to focus on the bars, not the background. But it could be tricky to pick up a color combination which contrasts well. Luckily, there are logical rules for how to create uh, color schemes that work together. Let's look closer how to create a color harmony. There are six main uh, color schemes which work great. And the first is monochromatic. A monochromatic scheme uh, takes the base hue, then repeats it in various shades, tints and tones. You may ask now, what is the hue, shade, tint and tone? There is a slide which will help you understand those things. They are not complicated indeed. Uh, hue is uh, pretty much synonymous to what we actually mean when we said uh, the word color. All the uh, primary and secondary uh, colors, for instance, are hue. Then uh, tint is basically a hue mixed with uh, white color. Uh, tone uh, hue mixed with uh, white and black color and uh, shade uh, hue mixed with black color. This is uh, pretty much all uh, what you need to know about those things. Let's get back to our uh, color schemes. So uh, the next one is uh, complementary and uh, complementary uh, color schemes use uh, colors at opposite sides of the color wheel. The high contrast of uh, complementary colors creates a vibrant look, especially when used at full saturation. This color scheme must be managed well so it is not jarring. Complementary color schemes are tricky to use in large doses but work well when you want something to stand out. Complementary colors are really bad for texts, just for your interest. Next one is split complementary scheme. And uh, you guessed it right, it is a variation of a complementary scheme that uses two colors on either side of a directly complementary color. This color scheme has the same strong visual contrast as a a complementary color scheme but has less tension. The split uh, complementary color scheme is often a good choice for beginners because it is difficult to mess things up. Let's move forward. Analogous scheme. Analogous uh, color schemes use uh, colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Analogous uh, color schemes are often found in nature and are harmonious and pleasing to the eye. Make sure you have enough contrast when choosing an analogous uh, color scheme. Choosing one color to dominate, a second to support. The third color is used along with black, white or gray as an accent. Triadic scheme. A triadic uh, color scheme uses uh, colors that are evenly spaced around the color wheel. Triadic uh, color schemes tend to be quite vibrant. Even if you use pale or unsaturated versions of your hues. To use a triadic harmony successfully, the colors should be carefully balanced. Let one color dominate and uh, use the two others for accent. Tetradic. 
The tetradic uh, color scheme, also known as a, a rectangle a color scheme, uses four colors arranged into two complementary pairs. These rich uh, color schemes offer plenty of possibilities for variation. Tetradic uh, color schemes works best if you let one color be dominant. You also should pay attention to the balance between warm and cool uh, colors in your design. And you can see guys that for each uh, color scheme I added a line of code here at the bottom. And uh, of course I did this purposely. Uh, we are learning uh, through practical approach. So let's see our color wheel in use. Uh, let's open our studio. There you will see some code which I already uh, prepared for you guys in order just to go through this uh, tutorial uh, fast and smoothly and uh, uh, don't waste our precious time on just uh, typing some characters. So uh, now I will show you some handy trick uh, how to get uh, the color which you liked from your desktop. So if you are on Mac, uh, just go to Spotlight Search, type color and you will see this nice and cool application called Digital Color Meter. Uh, please open it and uh, we will go now to uh, Better Super the Science. Uh, this is a new version of uh, our website. It will be ready uh, quite soon. But guys uh, from design team are already prepared some cool colors which uh, we will steal right now. So uh, if you put uh, your mouse over the color, you will see uh, some values here. So uh, you can adjust uh, this uh, digital uh, color meter uh, by going here, like uh, typing view and uh, make sure that uh, display values are showing as hexadecimal values. If you, if you are on uh, Windows guys, uh, there are m many similar tools uh, to you, this one, just don't hesitate to use them and I will include some links uh, into description. So as you see, we're getting some code for this color and it is two E, A, D and double E. So uh, I already put it here and uh, we need to assign this uh, hexadecimal uh, color to SDS uh, color variable. So let's open our cheat sheet and have a look at our color schemes. So uh, first one was monochromatic and in order to implement it in R uh, we need to use uh, color tools package and uh, a sequential function from this package. So what uh, we need to do exactly? We need uh, to pick up some color, we already did it and uh, we assigned it to SDS uh, color variable. Then we need to pass uh, this color to our function and uh, it will give us uh, a list of uh, sequential colors based on saturation. So uh, we can uh, control number of colors which we are getting uh, by uh, adjusting percentage parameter. Yeah. So uh, if we will increase this uh, will have less colors. If we will decrease it, we will have more colors. So as you see guys, other functions are named exactly as our uh, color schemes and they are working exactly in the same way as described in the cheat sheet. So if uh, we pass our choose uh, color, for example, for a complementary function, we'll uh, uh, receive back uh, the color we choose and uh, the color which is on opposite side of the color wheel. Uh, you can check how other functions are working but this is really straightforward. We just learned how to use a color wheel to pick uh, colors for our data but there is another nice approach more applicable to data actually. Personally, I'm mostly using uh, Color Brewer in everyday tasks. 
Industry experts agree that nowadays this package is a classic approach to colorize your data. The first step when choosing a color scheme for your data visualization is understanding the data that you're working with. Uh, there are three main uh, categories that matter when choosing color schemes for data. Sequential, diverging and qualitative uh, color schemes. Let's go through them. Sequential uh, color schemes are those schemes that are used to organize quantitative data from high to low using a gradient effect. With uh, quantitative data, you typically want to show a progression rather than a contrast. Using a gradient-based color scheme allows you to show this progression without causing any confusion. Diverging color schemes allow you to highlight the middle range extremes of quantitative data by using two uh, contrasting hues on the extremes and a lighter uh, tinted mixture to highlight the middle range. And the uh, qualitative color schemes are used to highlight, you guess it, qualitative uh, categories. With qualitative data, you typically want to create a lot of contrast, which means using different hues to represent each of your data points. So let's go back to our studio and look how this works on real example. Uh, what we need to do here, we need to load uh, two packages, R uh, Color Brewer and GG Power. Let's do this. Uh, now uh, we can call this function Display Brewer All. And uh, it will show us uh, all available uh, palettes. And indeed, they are split into three categories as shown on our cheat sheet. So uh, let's go fuse and cr create a simple data frame. Uh, we will have two variables, month and uh, revenue. Uh, for month we will have values June, July and August and uh, for revenue we will have uh, 10, 15 and 12. So uh, let's create basic bar plot. Uh, we will plot uh, month on the x-axis and uh, revenue on y. We will uh, color our months uh, by the first uh, palette. So uh, first palette which we used uh, was uh, sequential. Uh, number of, of colors uh, are free and name of it blues. So uh, let's do this. And indeed, we got the same uh, color scheme as uh, we used in uh, our cheat sheet. So let's go fuse and uh, repeat this exercise with a different uh, color scheme. Like in this case, we will uh, use diverging and uh, we will just uh, change uh, the palette name from blues to LDBU. So let's do it. Uh, let's just copy past and uh, let's let's change this to LD BU. And as you can see, it is working uh, perfectly. Uh, but uh, of course, for this bar plot. Uh, the best uh, color scheme would be uh, qualitative and uh, we will use it right away. We will just uh, uh, change the name of the palette to dark2 and voila, we get this nice qualitative uh, color scheme in implemented in our chart. So uh, how to use the color wheel approach, it is basically the same. So uh, we, will copy, we will copy our plot and uh, instead of using uh, brewer functions, we will uh, assign uh, to palette, let's, let's use uh, for example analogous color scheme. 
so we will uh, just change this part of code and uh, we will use analogous uh, color scheme and uh, as you can see our colors change accordingly we can do the same trick here but uh, showing by choosing for example a triadic scheme a triadic should suit uh, this bar plot real well so let's try these colors suits our chart perfectly and this bringing us to the end of this tutorial we uh, covered a lot today guys hope this session was very useful for you just uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and uh, as usual if you want uh, this awesome infographic which uh, i presented during uh, this video just uh, let me know where to send it so uh, let's summarize some important thoughts so uh, when creating data visualization the most important part of choosing the right color scheme comes down to understanding your data with so many different tools and uh, pre-made uh, color schemes out there, the hardest part isn't actually finding the right colors. It is knowing how to use those colors to display the information in the best way possible. Now that you know how to find your color schemes, go put your newfound knowledge to work. And for today, this is it. Thank you again guys, don't forget to subscribe to Super Data Science YouTube channel, like and comment this video. Bye bye, see you soon.